Hello, this is Hawk the Bean, and I'm here with r slash Tumblr again. We are tumbling yet again because it's so much fun. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Oh yes, and a quick update because I felt like it. As of recording this, there are 10 days left, but by the time this comes out, on um the fifth there will be seven days left that's gonna be fun anyway um let's get right to the ooh, ooh, tumbling Imagine being in a bar overhearing an argument between two guys calling each other words, and one of them says, I speak 12 languages, and you barely speak one. Don't you call me a stupid and list 12 languages, and one of them happens to be your native language, so you chime in, and like, really? You speak 12? Uh, really? And the dude uh, the answers in a very a polite word with perfect grammar and a pretty good pronunciation. I don't actually speak so early, but please don't expose and embarrass me. I'm curious how to argue with the guy who has no idea what you just said. <sighs> Once when I was 10, so 17 years ago, I was on one of those Neopet forums that was in 2006. Frequently mostly by edgy teenagers with pets with, with pets went to your or, or else who wanted to get around a ban on romance and gay talk to discuss MCR members making out. It was well past midnight and I was secretly on an extremely clunky laptop the size of a modern desktop sitting on my top bunk and I in the tiny room I shared with my sister and I did not remember the forum topic at all. At some point, one of the participants is for like ass. How old are you anyway? 12? And when I honestly replied 10, he responded, Whoa, kid, you better get off the boards. Wandering through the Neo boards at 2 a.m. is like walking. A, a, a naked through the Bronx with your wallet and dangling from your, your nipples. And this frightened me so much, I slapped my, the computer shut and went to bed immediately. 17 years later, I still remember the message word for word, including the filter avoidance misspellings. I need everyone to know oh, about this formative childhood memory. Bronx wallet nipples guy, if you are out there, hit me up and tell me what your deal was. For how? POV, you're the king, and I just made an inappropriate joke about your virility in front of the whole royal court, and you want to punish me, but you can't react in anger, lest the court think my joke is true. <sighs> Do Japanese people prefer dubbed uh, American cartoons? An interview. Uh, English is bad for this one. The Japanese translation feels off. We've come full circle. Fun fact, apparently there's a serious debate in Japan as to whether the King of the Hill sub or dub is better. <laughs> This is something I never knew I was waiting my whole life to read. <sighs> I knew there was more to this post. Mad Eating Race, China, 1901 to 1904. 
This is an extremely important picture. I've never seen someone from 1904 having fun. OMG. He has a nice face. No, but history behind this picture is really interesting. The reason that everyone always looked miserable in old photos was that they took too long to take. Once it actually became it's red, it only took seconds to take a picture. It was because getting your photo taken was treated the same as getting your portrait painted. A very serious occasion meant so that your sense would know that you existed and what you looked like. But one time, some British dudes went to China to go on an, an anthropological expedition, and they met some rural Jap Chinese farmers who decided to take their pictures. Now, these people weren't exposed to the weird culture of the time around getting your photo taken, so this guy just has flashed a big grid during the photo because he was told to strike a pose. And that's suppose he wanted to strike. A lot of people are crazy. Russian man trapped on Chinese reality TV show finally voted out. Mr. Vladislav Ivanov, who speaks fluid Mandarin and went by at a stage named Lulu, who shouldn't have running for nearly three months. Hmm. Ivanov, who called himself Lulu after a main character from his favorite Japanese anime series, it's called Gia, the Lucia of the Revolution of the Re Rebellion. Oh, I, I think I've um, watched the beginning of that. Then I got, then I lost interest because Max. I repeatedly implored the audience to stop voting for him. Even sing a song called "Let Me Go Home" to drive home his point. From another article I read today. <laughs> what the heck? He wasn't even there to be a contest, and he joined the crew as a Chinese teacher, but the director noticed his good looks and begged him to compete. <clears throat> Poor guy made to the finals, and if, if he had been one of the winners, he would have been contractually forced to be in a Boy band, whether he want to or not, this is the closest any human being has ever come to actually being sold to One Direction. You can't drink a water Pokemon's water. That's just not right. What about the other fluids that a water Pokemon might make? I don't know what they mean, but I'm glad that this just happened. Post cancelled! Grill Army! Attack! Look at all them chickens. <laughs> oh boy. I can imagine this shape. The you thread this is going to look. Yeah, you think? Amethyst is the lactite, 28 centimeters, complete all around. Alright, you guys, you're okay. Inquire for, inquire for details. Don't. <laughs> to shreds, you say. The communication is hell site affectionate. It's an ecosystem. You can guess a joke. Hmm. I got the Miku Ramen. My BF said it was it is one good. Two, nuclear blue. Like, more blue than the color blue itself. I'll try it later or tonight and post a follow-up. Okay, so sad rice noodles, unusual for something labeled as ramen, and the powder is just a tinge of white. I can detect blue. Add rolling water to the fill a line and, and let it sit for, for minutes and... Uh, 
It is so freaking blue. Ooh, it is bluer than the freaking color. What the heck? They noodleified I'd make his hair. Baby girl, you are soup now. Blue glow from Chernikov radiation from underwater nuclear reactors. They weren't kidding when they said nuclear blue. <laughs> Alright, here we are, getting political again, and very accurate, because it's what uh, it actually is happening right now. By the way, um, all of this anti-trans stuff is going to turn into a transgenocide. In fact, it already is. Step 9 of the 10 steps it takes for genocide to occur. That's where we are right now. Anyway... No child should get gender affirming care. Turns into no one should get gender affirming care. No trans person should be in children's media. Turns into no trans person should be in media. They use children's quote unquote safety as a method to get a foot in the door. Then they expand their previous statements to ensure a near complete erasure of trans people and queer people. Followed by no trans person should be in public, which we, which will all be followed by no obvious is queer people should be in public. Hmm. They're not going to stop at children's health care or visible in the media, and they're not going to stop at trans people. They're out for all of us. Trans people are just the easiest targets today. <sighs> they won't stop with just making it so that we can't transition or live the lives we want. Being trans will, will actually get you ooh, 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 executed in the near future. Because that's what these, these Nazis, I mean conservatives, want. There's no difference. Nazis are conservatives. I mean conservatives are Nazis. Well, and I was in high school, my AP English teacher, I could not talk right. <laughs> my AP English teacher told us we weren't allowed to eat in class, so I took that as a personal challenge to see the most ridiculous thing I could eat in class without getting in cut. That uh, was, so I started bringing soup to class and as soon as I cracked the lid by thermo, it's the tiniest bit. This football player that sat like three rows in front of me would, would be going, I smell meat, someone has soup, and no one ever believed him. Football player has a plus two to perception and a minus two to charisma. The only valid response. What's ridiculous about that is that this dude literally somehow smelled that. My mom said we can take Slim Shady down to the abortion clinic and give out free voting rights to the pro-life protesters. If it's cool with your mom. Hang on.
Are you pro-life? I'm pro-choice. Slim Shady is anti-life. I love that. Look into the horse's eyes. It's going to eat their faces so freaking fast. Apparently, context says this horse has injured everyone who has tried to ride them. Oh, that's beautiful. And exactly what I deserve. Damn, that's a good time. Let's take this Animal Crossing and put it in VR. Yes, Nintendo, are you taking notes? Real life, the concept you're thinking of is going outside. Yeah, okay, buddy. I'm just gonna go out and step outside and go talk to our neighbor, the talking cat. The fuck kind of real life are you living? Oh, it's a long one. Gosh, Anon, that's a big book. What's it about? Well, have you heard of My Little Pony, right? And you yeah, have heard of Fall New Vegas. Well, wait. There's physical copies of Fallout Equestria. They have to be massive. <laughs> what the frick? <sighs> the first run was five hardbacks of progressively increasing girth. The stack is hefty, but the books are comfortable. Each chapter has chapter art too, which I consider a plus in all fantasy books. Later runs were single book soft cover monstrosities. I think I saw another five volume hardback run recently, but I'm not deeply involved in the fandom anymore. Reverse image search. Zero results found. What the heck? The second frame was two volumes. Hardback with jackets. Don't know about any subsequent runs. I think the five volume split was the best option. It's a big damn story. For who... Has it read it? Yes, that's a functional replica of the main character's go-to weapon. No, I didn't cast my eyes like that. I bought from the person who did. <sighs> when I was in high school, my English teacher told us about, the, about his MLP Fallout crossover fake he wrote. It's like a hundred chapters, so he was able to pay his mortgage because people don't mind to get him to keep updating. But more and more kids were looking it up, and it got spread because it's erotic, and our teacher ended up being fired over it. And he punched a student. Anon, please tell me your teacher's the author of this. Hey, it's the Anon from the MLP fan. Oh, fake. This is my teacher who wrote that. Okay, I kind of hate that I noticed, but I'm pretty sure that Anon's teacher did not write the uh, books the others are showing off. He wrote a darker, edgier, and somehow even longer fan it, oh, of that and fanfic called Project Horizons. Original follow-up, a question was written by someone unknown as Cat, who I'm 90% sure is a woman, and his story only has some PG-13-ish scenes at worst, you know, aside from the violence and gore that comes with the Fallout setting. 
Project Wright, as this was as written by a guy known as Somber. I remember him mentioning in a post trap notes that he got fired for failing the wrong student once and the fic itself including multiple explicit sex scenes. It's important to me you know what the third of printing looks like. Please note the good pages. Oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. One of Tumblr's secret trump cards is its ability to deliver absolutely obliterating gut punches like this without any context or warning whatsoever. I'm real. I actually kind of don't like the MLV fandom. Particularly on the internet. Because it is because of this particular brand of degenerates that Rule 34 exists. Yeah, they sorry that crap. <laughs> Blocking you for blazing a stupid pose. And that is your cock right. Farewell, sir. Civic, 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 civic. Penis typo. <laughs> Valhalla does not discriminate against the kind of fight that you lost. Did you lose the battle with cancer? Maybe you died in a fist fight, even facing addiction and take a deep drink from a spagoon. Odin slams his cup down and asks for the glorious tale of your demise. Oh my god, this is beautiful. A small child enters Valhalla. The battle they lost was hiding from an alcoholic father. Odin sees a flinch when he slams the cup and refrains from doing it again. He hears a child's pain, no glorious battle this, but one of fear and wretched survival. He invites the child to sit with him, offers his choicest mead, and instructs his men to bring a sword and shield, a bow and arrow of the very best materials and appropriate size. Here, he says, you will find no man who dares to harm you, but so you will know your own strength and be happy all your days in Valhalla. I will teach you to use these weapons. The sad day comes when another child enters the hall. Odin does not slam his cup. He simply he beams with pride as the first child approaches the newcomer and holds out her bow and quiver and says, Nobody here will hurt you. Everyone will be so proud you did your best. And I'll teach you to use these so you always know how strong you are. A young man enters the hall. He hesitates when Odin asks his story, but long lot asks and ekes out. Skinheads after the pride parade. His party got into a building and called for help. The police took a little longer than perhaps they needed to, and two of those uh, self-same skinheads are in the hospital now with broken bones that need setting. But six against one is no fair match. The fear in his face is obvious. Here, among men and large enough to break him in two, Will he face an eternity of torment for the man he left behind? A 
Odin rumbles with anger. Coat urses the low worms who brought this man to his table and regales him with tales of Loki so to show him his own welcome. A day will come, my friend, when you seek to be united, and so you shall. To request the aid of your comrades in battle is no shameful thing. A woman in pink sits near the head of the table. Oh, she's nearly skin and bones and has no hair. This will not last. Health returns in Valhalla, and joy and light and merrymaking. But now, her soul remembers the battle of her life, and it must heal. Odin asks, and asks again, and the words pour out like poisoned water, thinks she couldn't tell her husband or children the pain of chemotherapy, the agony of a mass asectomy, the pain still leaper of a, we found a tumor in your lymph nodes. I'm so sorry. At last, it's an urgent question. What is left of her? Odin raises his flag on high. What is left of you, fair warrior queen, is a spirit bright as fire, a will as strong as any forged iron, a life as great as any sea. Your battle was hard fought, and lost in the glory only such for her can bring, and now the pain and fight are behind you. In the months to come, she becomes a scop of the hall. Note the motion, but simple choice. She tells the story of the great healers, Agnes and Tanya, who fought alongside her at thousands of others who turned from no battle in the belief that at one day, one day the, the war may be won. The warriors Jesse and Mabel and Jerry and Monique still battling on, and queens and soldiers and great women of yore, the day... It comes when she calls a familiar name, another scarred woman, eyes sunken and dark, limbs frail, curly black hair shaved close to her head, looks up and sees her across the hall. Odin descends from his throne. A tall and foaming goblet in its hands and stuns the hall entire into silence as he kneels before the newcomer and holds up the goblet between her small, dark hands and bids her to drink. All fat other, the feasting multitudes cry. Red rings, great Odin, spear shaker, ancient one, wanderer, teacher of gods to his knees for this lone waif. He waves him off with a hand. This woman, Latisha, destroyer of cancer, from whom the great tumors fly in fear, has fought that greatest battle, he says, his voice rolling across the hall. She has fought not another body, but her own. Trade blows not with other limbs, but with her own flesh, has allowed herself to be pierced with needles and scored with lives, taken poison into her very veins and to defeat this enemy. And, lo and at long last, it is time for her to put her weapons down. Do you think for a moment this fight is less glorious for being in silence? Her deeds are less for having been aided by others who provide her weapons. She has a place in this great hall indeed. The highest place. And the children perform feats of archery for the entertainment of all, and the women sing as a young, young man who still waits his beloved plays a, plays a lute, which after all is not so different from the guitar he once used to break a man's face in that great final fight. Valhalla is a place of joy, of glory, of great feasting and merrymaking, and it is a place for the soul and mind to heal.
that <laughs> that was a lot and it was incredible all right this might be the last one i mean it has to be right Perfect. And what's funny is that this actually happened. I would f I'm unfamiliar with this story. Please elaborate. First off, to get separated from the rest of his unit, but he's the only one carrying the emergency and the amphetamines for the unit, takes too many and goes on a one man rampage for like two weeks straight, giving the opposing Soviet soldiers nightmares for decades. Oh, he did it all on skis. What the heck? Did he survived? <sighs> yeah, sorry, his meta to his met up two to three week rampage. He got injured by a landmine, traveled 400 kilometers on skis, and only ate pine buds and a Siberian jay that he caught when she ate raw. When he made it back to finish the lines, he was taken to a hospital where it was found his heart rate was nearly 200 beats per minute. And his weight had dropped to 43 kilograms, 94.7 pounds. His name was Imo o Okuvenin, if you want to, if you want to look him up. Those are the eyes of a man who has seen God and laughed. All right. That Valhalla story actually had me tearing up a bit there. The distraction before I can do the outro. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Not sure what we're going to be doing tomorrow. I might want to get back into something that I haven't done in a while. <sighs> Until then, I guess I'll just have to be saying goodbye.